GM and LG Battery get a big loan. Rivian and Mercedes pause plans for joint venture. Toyota may delay some EV programs and more. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Laura Harris. Welcome to Auto News Now. We'll hear more on those headlines soon. But first, our lead story. The U.S. Energy Department completes a $2.5 billion loan to a joint venture of General Motors and LG Energy Solution to help pay for three new lithium-ion battery cell manufacturing facilities in Ohio, Tennessee, and Michigan. It will support 6,000 construction jobs and 5,100 operations jobs. Officials, automakers, and EV battery companies will close out the deal and discuss strategies to recruit and retain a diverse and skilled battery workforce. GM and LG Energy are considering an Indiana site for a fourth U.S. battery plant. From one joint venture to another, Rivian and Mercedes are putting a hold on a collaboration to build electric vans in Europe. The automakers signed a memorandum in September for a joint venture to produce two large full electric vans in a factory in Central or Eastern Europe within the next few years. The project has been paused indefinitely. Mercedes cited Rivian's ongoing reprioritization of projects, and Rivian says it will focus on its consumer and existing commercial business. This gives Mercedes one fewer production partner in light commercial vans. Toyota might delay some EV programs. The automaker is expected to outline adjustments to its electric vehicle strategy to key suppliers early next year, as it races to narrow the gap on price and performance. With industry leaders like Tesla, the automaker is expected to detail the EV plan changes through early 2026. Toyota has been looking at ways to improve the competitiveness of EVs being planned for this decade. You can read more on these stories in our newsletter, The Daily. To subscribe, go to the More section on our website and click Newsletters on the left side of the screen. Here at our Automotive News Congress in Detroit, we had many panels, one of which was software-defined vehicles and connected cars. Now, when asking what a software-defined vehicle was, there were many definitions, but everyone we spoke to is all in agreement that software is imperative when it comes to the changing auto industry. The auto industry is taking cues from the mobile phone industry, as software as a service is driving the transformation of a business historically focused on hardware. Automakers are acting more like software developers, looking to continuously improve their product. But what is a software-defined vehicle? Software connected vehicles is the biggest disruption and change we're seeing in the automotive um, ecosystem. And it's about the separating the software from the hardware as the industry is coming from a very hardware centric development to a more software defined. Automotive startups and legacy automakers are embracing changes at different paces and for different reasons. Startups are looking to extend its ecosystem of lifestyle services that integrate into customers' lives, like music or applications. And traditional automakers look for products and services that are interchangeable with their vehicle model offerings. General Manager at Amazon Web Services, Wendy Bauer, says updates will extend the vehicle's life cycle. That vehicle will be able to continually update features and new offerings throughout the life cycle and do it more frequently and quicker. Bauer says now the industry wants to collaborate with the software makers in improving their products continuously, upskilling their workers, and getting more data to know their customers better. Over-the-air updates allow consumers to get updates in real time, as OEMs better understand the health of the vehicle and continue to bring better vehicles to the industry. Vice President of Customer Engagement at Seabro, Steve Schwinke, says connectivity will be key moving forward. If you're not using connectivity to accelerate that learning cycle, you are going to remain uncompetitive in this market. And so this is what's really driving this business is that's becoming more and more competitive. And when it comes to safety, Schwinke says the transformation the automotive industry is undergoing can help improve it. But Automotive News' Pete Bigelow says the future is uncertain as automakers struggle to catch up to where they need to be with incorporating software into vehicles, 
and decoupling that software from hardware. But there's a big shift. Theoretically, they're going to get to a point where uh, they can update vehicles via over-the-air updates, and we're going to have new features, and our cars are going to get better over time. But, but that's not happening at a pace that is consistent with the rest of the world right now. Thank you to all the panelists for taking the time to speak with us. That's all we have today for Auto News Now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Auto News TV and online at autonews.com. For updates from our reporters all day, every day. I'm Laura Harris. Have a great night, and I'll see you all next time.